guys, today I am finally filming a full face of my all-time favorite makeup. I've been wanting to do this for a while and you guys have also asked me for it, so I wanted to get it up. Now some of these items here in my collection I have been using for a very long time. They cannot be replaced. I absolutely love them, even though I may stray or try something different. These are my holy grails. And then other items here I maybe even just discovered last year, but I do love them. I don't want to replace them. I'm definitely going to repurchase them. So that's what today's video is all about. I also had a super late idea last night. I posted on Instagram stories. I think it was at like 11 o'clock to ask me some questions about my favorite non-beauty related things. So you didn't ask for it, but that's what we're doing today. I thought it might be fun to do like a little chit chat Q and A kind of thing. So if you do enjoy this video at any time, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you in. I'm gonna put my hair back and we will get into this video. So before we get into palettes, uh, I had such a hard time choosing a palette. I wanna talk about concealer because I need to prime my lids. So this is the Tarte Shape Tape and I have a fresh one here. I wear mine in the shade Light. And I chose this because I have repurchased it the most out of all my concealers. I really do love the No Filter Concealer from ColourPop. And I also really like the Flower Beauty Light Illusion that I just tested out recently in Drugstore Virgin 2, but I haven't had as much experience with those two concealers and I haven't purchased them the same amount that I have purchased this concealer. If you haven't tried it before, what I do really like about Shape Tape is that it is full coverage and then also too, it doesn't make me look super dry and it doesn't crease. But you have probably tried part Shape Tape. I think everybody has. Next is shadows, and this probably isn't going to be the most technical. It's not like going to be really a tutorial. I'm going to be chatting a little bit more while I'm putting my shadows on. But I wanted to choose a palette that I've had in my collection for a very long time because I have so many, and what always happens is that I buy a palette, and then a week or two later, after I've reviewed it, after I've demoed it quite a bit, then it just kind of falls to the wayside. And so I wanted to choose a palette that I've been using for a very long time, and that's Modern Renaissance. And because I just did a video, bunch of videos with this, I did a collab with it, I also did a panning project with it, I also am going to use a little bit of Norvina, maybe. I don't know what I'm going to do today yet. Um, but I do have some Stila Glitter and Glows that I'm also going to be using as a top coat because I absolutely love those. And I'm going to start with Warm Taupe from Modern Renaissance. And just blending that up. Again, not super technical. We have some things to do tonight, so I thought this would be a good video to do today because I want my makeup to look good. And these are products that I already know I love. It's kind of hard to do a first impression on a day with a bunch of events because it could turn out pretty bad. So I thought it would be a good day for this. The first question I got was kind of a hard one to answer and it was what has been your favorite year of your life so far? I can't say for sure because I, I can't think of a year where like everything lined up. It's usually like some good and some bad. I did get married in 2017 which was obviously an awesome event um, but it was also a very stressful year. It was very stressful leading up to the wedding. So I can't really say that year. Maybe 1988 because that's when I was born and I'm awesome. I don't know. I guess that would be it. I kind of, it's hard to say. And I know a lot of times when people have kids, when someone asks like, what's the best day of your life? That's usually the answer. Usually it's the day you got married. Um, but I feel like that's kind of limiting when you mark a day and maybe it happened 20 years ago. So I don't know. That's my opinion. Taking some of uh, Volatile from Norvina. And the next question, I got a question, well not necessarily about favorites, it was what advice would you give to someone regarding just starting out on YouTube? I'm gonna do a whole video on this, I think. I've already kind of scribbled down some answers some answers some advice I guess that I have 
but just very quickly, it would be that stick with it because it does get better. It's really frustrating in the beginning, especially if you have no experience being on film. My hardest part and still my challenge sometimes is just filming. You think it's gonna take 20 minutes and you know when you watched when I first started watching YouTube and I saw like a seven minute video I was like okay bing bing boom they did that in seven minutes it took an hour to edit they uploaded it it went super fast but that's just not how it goes sometimes I have to say my intro like 20 different times no lie sometimes videos take me about two hours to film because I'm just having a really difficult time editing of course things can go wrong YouTube uploading sometimes goes wrong or you have a really bad internet connection. So there's so many different things that can go wrong. And it's just this learning process. I feel like I learn something different either from you guys or just in the technical stuff every time I do a video. Sometimes it's that maybe I should be looking a certain direction or I should be editing this way or this cut should be different. And you'll think at the time when you do a video that it's perfect and that I did my best and then you'll go back and watch it and you'll realize like oh I could have done something better there so it's like this it's just a learning process and be kind to yourself forgive yourself when you do make mistakes because you'll learn something different every day or at least I have just gonna take a big fluffy brush blend everything all together and then my other favorite thing that I never talk about uh, these are from Kirkland these are the daily facial towelettes this is what I always use to like clean up my edges they're good makeup wipes in general if you like a makeup wipe for nighttime but I really love them for just doing this. I don't know, I kinda just wanna leave it here. I think I wanna top it with my Stila Glitter and Glows. I hope you guys don't mind too much. I'm just gonna keep it simple. I have other videos to film today. I'm doing so much pre-filming for while we are away. So I have three to choose from. I have a ton of these, but these are the three that I wanted to use today. So this one, I think this is what I'm gonna end up using. This is Wonderlust, and I think this technically may be a shimmer and glow, and it's not going to pick up on here at all. This one has a ton of different colors reflected in it. It's like a peachy pinky. I think there's some purples and greens in there. No, it's a glitter and glow. I just checked, not a shimmer. And then this one is Kitten Karma. A little bit more gold. And then I also have Smoldering Satin, which is a little bit deeper. So I think I want to use Wonderlust. I couldn't do a favorites video and not include these. Ugh, so pretty. I haven't used this in a little while. I said a while ago I was thinking of doing a full video of these, like all of mine with swatches. If you want to see that, let me know. I keep moving it every month. I've thought about it, it just hasn't been done. And then I'm going to take my finger and just blend it into that Norvina shade. I love these because it looks like you did something when it took two seconds. Moving on to primers, I am gonna do a little bit more with the under eye later on, but the one primer that I have purchased time and time again is from Touch and Soul, and this is the No Pore Blum. What I like about this is it is silicone-y and it does do some pore filling, but it's not heavy. I don't feel like it clogs my pores over time. And the price point is nice too. I think it's like $18, so it's not as expensive as some other primers that I like, like the Tatcha Silk Canvas. I'm just gonna use this on my nose and where I need that pore filling kind of action.
And then now I'm just taking some of this silk canvas. And I like to use this in areas that are a little bit more dry, like my forehead. I even keep a little travel size one with me in my purse because it's just like a quick moisturizer. And I've had three mini or travel sizes of this and I haven't actually had to purchase the full size, but I will be soon. You need so little of it. But I also get it a little bit on my cheeks because I also tend to be pretty dry there. For my foundation, I'm going to be using the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. I love this foundation and I actually haven't reached for it for a while. This is in the shade Porcelain. If you watched my panning project, the last one I did about going back to being cruelty free and panning all of my non cruelty free makeup, I said in that video that my all time favorite foundation was from Laura Mercier, the Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Foundation. And of course, I can't be purchasing that anymore because it's not cruelty free. So, this is like my second favorite. And this brush, in case you're wondering, is from It Cosmetics. It is the 3D HD Kabuki brush. And this is my favorite brush to apply this with. I have a little sampler of the new one. They now have a liquid version of this. I'll be using that in a get ready with me. I think on Monday, you guys will see it on Valentine's Day. Yeah, we have some things to do tonight. We are doing a big family dinner at this burger place that looks awesome. There are a lot of February, well early February and January birthdays in my family. So we always do a big group dinner. So happy birthday to my sister-in-law, Chelsea, although this is gonna be up much later. And then also happy birthday to one of my best friends, Justine. She's having a little party tonight for her birthday, so. We are looking forward to that. And then with this foundation, I always use my sponge on my forehead just because I feel like the brush pushes up any flakes that I may have. I like that this foundation is buildable. I can add more without it looking cakey. I also like it for traveling because you don't have to worry about it spilling. Heart shape tape again for the under eye. I was asked some movie questions, which I love a film. So these should be some good ones. We got some snow today, someone's shoveling outside. Hopefully that doesn't pick up. Anyway, uh, what is your all-time favorite movie? If you don't have one, what's top three? I definitely can't pick one. That's kind of hard. I like a lot of movies. But the first three that come to mind, Clockwork Orange, I have seen that a ton. That was my favorite movie when I was growing up. I also really love the book, so I have to mention that one. I also really love Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That is such a beautiful movie. It gets me every time. The performances are incredible in it. And then the last one I would say is Tim Burton's Big Fish. Such a good movie. I cry every time I watch that movie. I love movies in general that are relationship kind of dynamics. I like a good drama. So that one's a father and son. And it's weird because it's Tim Burton and I love it. The imagery in that one is really cool too. Some very cool imagery. And then just a little bit on my nose, which is already starting to look a little flaky.
For setting powder, I haven't been setting my under eyes a lot lately. I feel like it's helping them not look as dry, but I will today just so I can talk about my favorite one. I really like the Hourglass Veil Translucent Powder, but I haven't had as long with it. So this one is the one that I have purchased the most from Too Faced. It is the Peach Perfect. It smells really good. I mean, if you get it in your mouth, it's kind of gross, but it does smell really good, but it has some great brightening powers for me. It's got like a little bit of like a pinky kind of undertone, which I think helps with some of my darkness. Without fail, I always get this in my mouth. And then I'm gonna take a little bit. The other place that I definitely need it is in my crease line. I really press that in. The rest of my face, I won't set. Brow products should not be a surprise. I'm gonna do them while this is kind of setting a little bit. So this is the Kush Fiber Brow Gel and I have a new one. I wear mine in the shade Dutch. I used to really love Anastasia Dip Brow, of course. I think everyone does, but I feel like everyone's kind of getting away from that really structured brow and doing something a little bit more soft. So that's what I've been doing with this. I really like the look of it and it's much quicker. Oh, I forgot to say too, like if I wanted to do like a bonus favorite movie, I also love Meryl Monroe and I love The Seven Year Itch. I haven't watched that in a long time, but it is so funny. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It's such a good movie. It's a classic. doing little brow kind of strokes all the way up just to get my shape. I got a rogue hair right there that's sticking out. that's it it's pretty easy to do I could go back over this with a clear brow gel if I had to pick one it's also Anastasia's but kind of been getting away from that it's also really pricey so I'm trying to find a good replacement for that because I don't want to pay $20 for something that's clear and then the second movie question is what was a movie that you've seen in the past two years that you've loved I've seen a lot of movies um, we just watched A Star is Born and Harry Potter, all of them, I loved everything. Most of those were pretty good. Um, yeah, let's see. Hmm. I have one that's like on the tip of my tongue and I feel like I would need to look at a list. The Lobster, I really loved. We saw that maybe last year, really loved that movie. It's strange, it's kind of quirky, it's out there. Colin Farrell's in it. It's a very good film. And John C. Riley, he's so good in it. And then I really liked Okja. I believe that was a Netflix movie. It's kind of like a grown up version of Babe. Yes, you will cry. I think I cried like three times when I watched that. I really liked that one. And then just removing any of that excess powder. The brows aren't super perfect, but I feel like they're very natural looking. Just wanna finish off the under eye. So I'm gonna do some of that warm taupe shade first. And then add in the deeper brown volatile from Norvina. And wet, I'm just taking the shade Vermeer from Modern Renaissance and adding in just a little bit of an inner corner highlight. I haven't actually used this over a 
glitter and glow before so hopefully it's not too messy this is the Stila smudge eyeliner and that's actually my favorite liquid eyeliner but I don't currently have it mine was empty and I haven't replaced it yet so I'm just gonna use this so that when I put on my lashes you can't see the band as much I also really like this for the inner rim and I'm gonna be taking it down just a little bit further and smudging it all out This actually has a little smudger tool on the end. I feel like this wears very nice on my inner rim. I don't really have an all-time favorite for my inner rim because I feel like a lot of them do dissipate after a while. But I have a couple contenders that I just bought. I just tried during my Drugstore Virgin 2, the LA Girl Ultimate Eye, and that did really stay most of the day. For lashes, I have Allure Light by House of Lashes. Now, this pair I have worn specifically once or twice, so I'm not really, I don't mean that the style is my favorite, but more just the brand. I haven't found a favorite style of lash yet because I'm still trying new ones out. I, before YouTube, I really was just wearing lashes for going out or special occasions. Now I've been wearing them a lot more since I'm filming, so I really like the House of Lashes in general. I do feel like they wash really well. They also wear really well and they're fairly easy to put on. I have some other brands I wanna try out in 2019 and I did a video about it. So maybe I will find my favorite style eventually. If you haven't tried it yet, I'm just adding my glue. I was using Duo Lash for years and years and years, Duo Glue rather, and I recently picked up the House of Lashes actual glue. It's really good. Of course I say they're going to be put easy to put on and then they're just being a bitch. And for mascara, my holy grail would be better than sex. I just got this one. This is the better than sex and diamonds because it has the pretty little outer component. I love it. I have had, I've been using this for so long now, I keep repurchasing it. Definitely one of my favorite mascaras. Mascara is a hard one. I mean, there's never like one shoe fits. It's such like a depends on your lashes kind of thing. I have like five or six in rotation right now that I do really enjoy, but this is the standout one to me because I've been using it the longest. And I can't stop buying it, especially when it has cute packaging. For blush, no, not for blush, for bronzer, I have a butter bronzer, and I wear this one in the lightest shade light bronzer. My packaging is broken. Can't beat the price of this bronzer. I do really love it. I like the color. I think it looks good on me. It's buildable. It doesn't go on too heavy. I have such a habit of doing that talking while I'm banging, so please excuse. I'm learning. And please ignore my crusty lips right now. It's disgusting. And what's ever left over, I will take a little bit on my forehead, right around my hairline, a little bit on the nose, and then down on the neck. I can't tell you the last time I actually like contour, contoured. I just used my bronzer. 
had to grab this. This is what I'm currently panning, the Fresh Sugar Coconut Hydrating Lip Balm. It is not cruelty free, but I need something on my lips right now. Blush is one of those things that I really don't have any that's my favorite that I keep repurchasing them. I love Blush. It's one of my favorite products to use, but I like to try new ones. So the ones that I have been reaching for a lot are from Jouer. There's three of these. So this is the Adore Blush Duo. And this is what it looks like inside. It's very natural. That one pink one gives you a little bit of pop, but this color up here is very neutral looking. And I also really like this from Hourglass. And I think because I haven't reached for it in a while, this is what I'm gonna use. This is Mood Exposure. They don't look like anything in the pan, but when you get them on your face, they are some of the prettiest blushes. I'm forgetting I have more questions to answer. So tell us more about Lucy, where, how did you get her? What is she, best trick, favorite thing about her? And that came from my sister. Thank you so much. Um, I love my dog, so that was probably the wrong question to ask me because I could talk about her for hours and hours. Um, my favorite trick she does, she twerks. I need to get it on video one day. Maybe I'll put it in here if I can get it on video. If you scratch her behind in just like the right way, she will actually twerk. She learns super fast. She is what we think an Australian Shepherd and Border Collie. She's very smart, very intelligent. She always likes like, she likes learning new tricks. You can tell she does. She feels like satisfied and proud of herself. So she knows all the standards, sit, lay down, paw, she can spin, she can roll over. I'm trying to teach her now how to retrieve her sweater. I think that would be really cool. She gives kisses, she gives hugs. It's a really good dog. And the way I got her or found her, actually my old roommate did, she followed, Lucy followed my old roommate and her dog home on a walk and my roommate had gone through and did like all the proper procedures and wanted to see if anyone would claim her and did all of that and no one did claim her and we decided to keep her and i will never forget the day that we decided to keep her uh, my roommate had her upstairs in her room and i walked up the steps and i swear lucy she just knew she gave me a hug like she put her little paws around my hips and she gave me a hug and it was the sweetest thing I will never forget it. She still gives hugs just like that. And that would lead me to my favorite thing about her. She is the most loving dog I've ever had. And I have had a lot of family dogs, but she is so loving. She's so in tune with what's going on with us. If we're sad, she's sad too. She's there to comfort us. She's always got to be on top of one of us in our laps. She's just so loving. She's such a sweet girl and she's very quirky. I, I swear I can read exactly what she's thinking on her face. She just has such a personality. I went a little heavy with the blush, but guys, I really like blush and it's been a minute since I've done this. So that's where we are today. That's what happens when I start talking about my dog. And my favorite highlight would be from Ofra. This is Pillow Talk. This is at least my current favorite. I'm obsessed with this highlight. Doesn't look chalky. It gives just the right amount. I've tried a couple from them and I've liked them all. Looking to collect every single one, just like Pokemon. So pretty. And I'll answer the last question while I'm doing this because it's kind of hard to do that when I am doing my lipstick. And that was, what is your favorite type of music? Honestly, I am so stuck with music. I listen to everything I listened to in high school. All of the emo things. My favorite... Musician of all time is David Bowie, hands down. Uh, my favorite band of all time though would be AFI. I have listened to them since I was young, like right from the very beginning. My first tattoo I ever got was album art from one of their albums and I have no regrets. I love them so very much. David Havoc is like literally like a god to me. His voice, their lyrics, so aside from that and just being stuck in 2006, I really like um, 
all those bands. Like I can put on Tell All Your Friends and just have all the same nostalgic feels. So like Take Him Back Sunday, Coheed, Bright Eyes, Brand New. That's pretty much everything I still like. And I like a really good like singer songwriter too. I like uh, James Blake quite a bit. We're about to go see him in February. I cannot wait. Time for lipsticks. This was the hard one. I feel like I'm constantly discovering new lip favorites. And while I do have my old staples, I also feel like I've shown them a lot on here. I have Stila Patina, love that color, but I'm not really feeling that for today. Also, Jeffree Star Gemini, not feeling that one today either, but I will do Celebrity Skin because I really do love this shade and I really like his formula in general. And then I'm also gonna do this from Bite Beauty. This is their flat white lip gloss, my favorite lip gloss formula. I have two of these, kinda want more though. I'm just feeling just keeping this pretty neutral today. My foundation is cracking. Always. My only gripe about these liquid lipsticks is after a while, this little doe foot gets kind of fat. Like they just don't, they aren't as precise as they once were. just such a good nude shade it's so good and the bite beauty to top it off these have the most delicious coffee scent it's not like a fake coffee it, it smells like fresh roasted coffee beans it's so good but it doesn't last either which is kind of nice it's really just while you're putting it on And then to set everything together, you know I was gonna bring this. This is my last year, like one of my favorite products I discovered. This is the Catrice Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Fixing Spray. I just love it. It makes everything just melt into the skin. Let that dry for a minute because I want my makeup to stay all night. I have to bring out this one. I don't have all nighter, but I do have a full size of chill from Urban Decay. I think it's like the same thing, but this one is supposed to help with sweat. I don't know if it does that, but it certainly helps keep my makeup on longer. And I've been buying this one. This is probably one of the first things I ever bought at Sephora. And here is the completed makeup. I really enjoyed this today. I like that the eyes are kind of Cool tone but then the blush has a little bit of warmth to it so it gives it a little pop while everything else is very neutral I do hope you guys enjoyed this video seeing all my favorite products and then also to me just rambling about nonsense get some of your favorite products in mind for me because I think when we get back from our trip we're gonna do I'm gonna do not we're gonna do I'm gonna do a full face of subscriber favorite so I will either do a poll somewhere on here or on Instagram when we get back. So get those in mind for me. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe. If you have, thank you so very much. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you and I will see you soon.